Greetings, folks. Today we're going to take a look at source conversions and a more accurate way of modeling our voltage and current sources themselves. So we start off with a voltage source, E. Now, in the ideal world, I could stick anything out here, and this voltage source will always produce that potential. Similarly, if I had a current source, I, I could stick anything out here and I'd always get that same current. We know in reality that's not going to happen. For example, if we took a battery, like a 9-volt battery, and we put a big fat copper bar across that thing, that might be a milliohm, which would imply we'd be getting, you know, maybe 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 uh, amps. That's not going to happen, right? Um, Similar kind of thing with uh, current source. And if I just open this, this open resistance out here of air is mega ohms, billions of ohms. You know, um, use ohms law on that with a modest current source, and now you've got, you know, megavolts. That's not going to happen either. So a simple way of modeling this, sort of a first order approximation, in the case of the source, the voltage source, is to simply insert a limiting resistance. And I'm going to call this our internal E. Obviously then, even if I put zero ohms out here, the current will be limited by this resistance. So if that internal resistance is one ohm and that's a nine volt source, even if this is shorted, it's going to be nine volts over one ohm, nine amps max. Similar situation over here with the current source, except now it's in parallel. So I'll introduce this, our internal I. Same thing. If this is wide open, the current still flows through our internal I, and that sets up the maximum voltage. All right. Now, I think we could appreciate, we can imagine that we could throw a load at some resistance value out here. And for some source combo, ER, and another source combo, IRI, you can imagine that you would get the same voltage across to RL. So, um, you know, for example, if uh, our internal and RL were the same size and E was 10 volts, I'd have a 2 to 1 voltage divider, so I'd get 5 volts across here. Well, certainly we could imagine some current source and some R internal that if I put that same resistor over here, I would once again get 5 volts. Right? That by itself is not uh, really a crazy idea. What's more interesting, though, is it possible to come up with a current source and internal resistance such that no matter what the value of RL is, I'll get the same load voltage and current in this circuit as I will in this circuit. And the answer is yes, that is possible. And if you think about it, it makes sense. You know, Ohm's law is a linear relationship. And as long as I can get this circuit to produce the same values under the extreme, in other words, under a shorted or open case as this circuit, then it should work everywhere else. So, and this should work both ways, obviously. So let's consider if I have the, the voltage source and I want to make a current source. Right, so I've got a value for E and I've got a value for our internal E. And what I want to find is the appropriate value for I and our internal I such that for any given value of RL, this circuit produces the same load voltage and current as the original circuit. So let's take a look at those extremes. Short the load. What do we wind up with in the original circuit? Well, that gives us the maximum current, right? That gives us maximum I load. And what would that be? Well, if this is shorted, E drops across to our internal. Right? So it wouldn't make any sense to have 
uh, this source current be any larger than that. Because when this shorts out, all of this current's going to go through the load. Take the path of least resistance. So this hopefully will tell us what the value of the current source must be. All right, so that is the I source, which is equal to E divided by our internal E. All right, so take your E by divided by this, you get a current. That's the current we should be using over here. Now, consider the open case. If I open this up, there is no path for current flow. That means there's no drop across our internal E, which means that we must see whatever E is out here. So the load voltage VL, right, this, this produces the maximum VL, the load voltage VL would have to equal whatever our source, uh, whatever E source is. All right, so if that's a nine volt source and this is an ohm, then when I open this up, all of that nine volts should be appearing across the open. And you can kind of think of the open as just this humongous resistance value. And if you did a voltage divider, obviously, it's all going to drop across the load. That's another way of sort of looking at it. All right. Okay. So I'm supposed to get the same thing out here when I open the load out here. Well, what happens out here? All of this source current, if this is open, has to flow through our internal. In other words, this times our internal I has to equal my original E source. Okay? But I know the source current, IS, has to equal E divided by our internal E. You see where we're going here? All right? So if I plug this in back to here, an E source would have to equal E divided by our internal E, that's I, times our internal I. Well, the only way that can occur is if the internal resistance for the voltage source and the current source are the same value. Right, then, then your load out here is the same as your, as your source, volt, source voltage. So, now we have an idea. It turns out that our internal for the current source has to equal our internal for the, for the uh, voltage source. In other words, we just need to match the two resistors. And then the value for the source, the current source, is simply the maximizing current back here for the voltage source. In other words, it's the short circuit current. So that's E divided by, I'm just going to call it our internal now, because I know the two things are the same size. If I want to go the other way, if I have the current source, then instead of looking at the shorted load case, we look at the open load case, and I use Ohm's law on that. In other words, we say all of I flows through our internal. That tells me the open load voltage. That's what we have to uh, have for the source back here. Okay, so I'll say that the voltage of the E source would have to be whatever this current source is times our internal. Right. So far, so good. So let's look at a couple of examples. Let's start with the voltage source. Let's say we have a 10 volt value here, and I've got uh, 1 K ohm. So what's the conversion on this? Well, the conversion would be, first, translate the resistor. And by the way, make sure you obey the polarity, right? So this voltage source is plus to minus top to bottom. That's producing a current in this direction, so same current direction for our source back here. Anyway, I'm going to just replicate that resistor 1K, and then the value of the current source itself, like I said, is the short circuit current over here. That's 10 volts over 1K, which is 10 milliamps. So my claim is that a 10 volt source in series with a 1K is functionally identical 
to a current source of 10 milliamps in parallel with 1K. I can stick anything, right? I can stick anything out here. I put the same thing out here. That red resistor is going to see the same current and voltage in both circuits, right? That's the basic idea. So let's just throw something in there. I mean, you can you can try this at home. So there's my 10 volts and 1K. 10 milliamps, 1K. And what do you want to throw in there? All right, well, um, I'm going to throw in 4K. Why? The numbers are easy. Okay, what do I have over here? I got a voltage divider. Right, so my load voltage over here is going to be 10 volts times 4K over the total, 5K. So that's four fifths, eighty percent. BL is eight volts. What do I have over here? Um, again, if I just want to find the voltage, easy thing to do would be to put these two in parallel, one K in parallel, four K. Right, that's four fifths of the one K. That's eight hundred ohms. So V load parallel circuit, all voltage is the same, is simply ten milliamps times the eight hundred ohms. Bingo, eight volts. So put anything you want in there, all right? Pull 4K out, put something else in, should work. All right, now going the other way, take a current source. And I wanna find the voltage equivalent. So let's start with a six milliamp current source and a 3K resistor. What do I wind up with over here? Well, the resistor gets copied over. And once again, we find the maximizing value for the source. Right? Back here, the maximizing thing was the current. Maximize the current by shorting the load. Here, maximizing value is the voltage. I'm looking for voltage. So I do that by opening. In which case, Ohm's law tells me that E must be 6 milliamps times 3K. Right? There's no load, so there's no current here. All of it goes through the 3K. That's 18 volts. So this 3K in series with 18 volts should be the same as 6 mils with a um, parallel 3K. Hey, let's try it. Stick a value in there and see what we get. All right, I'm going to throw in a 6K because I can figure that out in my head. So we've got uh, 3K over here. Now, um, what do we end up with for our voltage? All right, 18 volts. How is that going to split? Um, well, let's do this one first. We could do a current divider between a 6K and a 3K. I know I'm going to get um, one third of the total current here, two thirds of the current there. Or if you prefer, you could say 3K in parallel with 6K is 2K. All right, kind of like I did over here. Either way. Six mils times 2K says the voltage across my 6K load would have to be 12 volts. All right, now. Moving over here, that's just a voltage divider. So VL is going to be the 18 volt source times the ratio of the thing you're interested, 6K over the total. So that's two thirds of 18, which lo and behold is 12 volts. Beautiful, all right, can't complain about that. Now the only thing I want to warn you about is if you're doing a source conversion and you have multiple sources, don't do them individually. In other words, if you had something like this, And you have another source in series with it, right? Don't convert this source and then convert this source and try to add them together because you're going to wind up with a series parallel combination. 
Instead, simplify this into a single voltage source with resistor. In other words, only try to go from this to this or this to this. All right, so what I would do is, in this case, these two voltage sources add. So I'd come up with one source that was E1 plus E2. The two resistors are in series, so they add. And I would be back to this. And this is the thing that I would convert. Similarly, if you had um, like a current source situation, like you had one of these, Right. You're not going to try and convert this and this. Because again, you're going to wind up with a series parallel arrangement. You know, If you convert each one of these separately, the first one is going to convert into this. And then the second one is going to convert into this. And clearly these sources are not in series. You can't just add these. So again, you would combine the two currents. Two resistors are in parallel that'll give you a new value it'll give you something that looks like you know this that's the thing that you convert all right okay so we can use this technique to simplify more complicated circuits and you know do an appropriate analysis so we're now getting into this area where we might have multiple sources and we might have something that's complex with let's say a current source and a voltage source and if i convert one of them I might wind up with something simple like this that I can that I, that I can take and um, you know reduce to this, come up with a simpler circuit. Off we go. Okay? All right.